thank you for the time. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. And um, I'm going to go through a summary of uh, quite a bit of work we've been doing here in New York State, which, again, as I mentioned a second ago, would apply to other similar states uh, in the Great Lakes area relative to the value of um, greenhouse gases um, that would be reduced by using an anaerobic digestion system. So uh, Peter Wright and myself, who's uh, listed here as well, has spent a lot of time working on this. Um, I get the uh, pleasure and opportunity to present this to you this time, and I acknowledge Jason Oliver, who also has put effort into uh, to the work. Um, so take-home points. Um, Manure-based anaerobic digesters provide more value to society than the current revenue streams they provide or they receive. Uh, the numbers I'm going to give you are not absolutes. Um, a lots of variance at the farm level, so I want to emphasize this focus on just the general trends um, and not the uh, overall values in every case. Um, definitely more work's needed to, uh, that would include communicating the values and lobby for change. Um, so we're going to go through a brief summary of anaerobic digestion in New York. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what New York's done recently in the last three years, uh, moving away from a R RPS standard, renewable portfolio standard, into a clean energy standard, and how that's uh, affected uh, um, our work in anaerobic digestion. Um, so I'm um, going to talk about quantifying the greenhouse gas emissions on New York State um, farms with digesters, and uh, look a little bit at the value um, that those reductions are if we apply the EPA social cost of carbon. So as already been mentioned, um, there's uh, comparatively few digesters in the country compared to the number of farms. Last time I checked, uh, which has been a few years ago, there was about 100 intensively managed anaerobic digesters in, in the country. And so those are digesters where we're actually putting heat, heat to the digestion vessel and uh, trying to maximize uh, gas production. Those are the kind of digesters that we work with a lot in uh, New York or solely in New York and uh, the Great Lakes states as well, as opposed to covered lagoons, which would have been included in EPA numbers. Um, so we're not representing anything with covered lagoons. Um, New York's had a slow, steady growth of digesters over the last uh, 18 years or so and um, started off with, with uh, one farm in 1998. Uh, uh, and we're now at about, it's actually about 32 to 33 operating digesters um, now in 2017. So still, still uh, slow, steady growth. Um, and there are, there's some reasons why the year we, we're, you know, we're this number of digesters around 30 or 32 and uh, about 4,800 dairy farms today. And that is because the economics associated with a digester need to be improved overall. Um, it's the case across the country, except maybe in Vermont. Um, so, in general, the total annual cost to own and operate a digester exceed the total annual benefits, whether it be monetary benefits or displaced cost. And so, um, that, that fuels our fire here in uh, this group at Cornell to keep working on things. Um, we recognize that uh, dairy farmers uh, uh, cannot uh, use too much from their milk, milk receipts to, to pay for large capital and uh, expensive operating cost investments like anaerobic digestion without some meaningful revenue. Um, so along those lines, we spent a lot of years uh, thinking about what could be done differently. Um, this is includes some vision that we articulated at a, um, a um, meeting that was the New York Cow Power meeting um, that was put on by DMI um, several years ago and looking to tie an uh, anaerobic digester-based system into the community. Um, not as easy as it looks. Um, we did actually look into the... Uh, Specifics of doing that in the town of Lowville, where, um, among other things, the Kraft uh, Philly cheese plant is, is located and several farms. So this is a cover page from a report that we uh, put out for a feasibility study. And in essence, um, the, that system could have been liable or uh, viable, economically viable, if um, about one-fourth of the tipping fees um, that uh, is normally associated with landfills actually went to the digester instead of the landfills. Um, <clears throat> We've also looked at partnering uh, with uh, digesters with greenhouse gases very extensively. Uh, Tim Shelford, who's in this group here, has uh, developed a real nice model on that, which includes economic projections, and um, it's, it's something that, that may hold some water down the road. Um, but uh, we firmly believe that uh, anaerobic digesters uh, provide a lot, of in, uh, a lot of benefit to farms and non-farms alike. Uh, we have this famous saying around here of, of our Appendix A, and Appendix A is basically uh, two pages about all the benefits anaerobic digestion provides. So with that, 
said, um, we, we keep looking at uh, ways to bring more value to the farms um, for amic digestion. And um, recently, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, our state um, started moving away from the RPS standard into a clean energy standard. Um, and there's some pretty, uh, pretty envious goals by the uh, way of statement by some of the state officials. Um, so we said basically energy digesters are in a good place to help the state um, achieve some of these goals. Um, greenhouse gas reduction to 40% 40, 40 um, between 1990 and 2030 levels, and uh, even higher reductions by 2050 along with uh, meaningful, very meaningful renewable energy uh, um, in the state by 2030 being 50%. So uh, quite a ways to go, and so for, uh, energy digesters and farms are really interested in that. Um, the, the model in New York State, as it was most of the country of yesterday, is centralized power. Um, so big power plants uh, transmitting uh, um, megawatts or, or gigawatts, if possible, I don't know, to, uh, to uh, outlying areas and, and being distributed. Um, tomorrow's vision in New York, anyway, is to, to decentralize and go with more local clean power. So another thing the state has a goal in that we say see where digesters can fit really nicely. So with those two um, top bullets being covered, we'll jump into um, really what's the meat of this, and that's the quantification of greenhouse gas emissions um, <clears throat> from uh, farms in New York and similar states that have anaerobic digesters. So um, the approach we used is no, no different than what's basically used when a farm um, is looking at or is participating in the carbon market. Uh, we basically calculate the uh, greenhouse gas emissions associated with a baseline condition, and then we subtract from that the uh, change in those emissions based on implementing an AMREC digester. And uh, so on our baseline side of things, um, this one picture basically represents the boundaries of our analysis. We look at all the energy uh, in this analysis, we look at all the energy that was being used, um, electrical energy that is, at the farm to uh, milk the cows, cool the milk, um, ventilate the barns if that's the case, certainly cow cooling, uh, pumping water and things like that. Um, we also looked at the emission, emissions associated with the long-term storage. So um, there are case of the methane and maybe some NO2 emissions depending on the conditions. Um, we do not include CO2 specifically here because it's a neutral emission greenhouse gas warming potential of one and it's being recycled above the Earth's um, surface, so uh, no need to account for that. Um, so if we break this up, um, typically um, uh, uh, farms in our area use about 1,100 kilowatt hours a year to, uh, per cow um, and the um, um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions with generating that much electricity in New York State. We have a special number. We're different in New York. And so if we use that uh, CO2 equivalent emission and multiply by the uh, kilowatt hours um, per year per cow, we, um, um, excuse me, I have to make sure my computer software doesn't shut down here. Uh, we have a 0.58 megatons of CO2 equivalent per year for the fossil fuels used. Um, then we get into the emissions from the uh, long-term storage, and we, we use the uh, IPPC Tier 2 method, um, so International Panel on Climate Change, and um, the uh, factors that go into that are what are the, uh, the mass of volatile solids, that's, the, that's uh, some of the energy in the manure that's basically converted to, uh, can be converted to biogas. Um, we look at the potential for that conversion, um, there's a conversion factor, and then there's some site-specific factors or location-specific factors depending on the uh, temperature. So that's the methane conversion factor. So if we crank the numbers out for a typical manure storage in an upstate New York, uh, we calculate four, about four megatons of CO2 equivalent per year. Um, that's on a per cow basis. And then if uh, we include N2O, basically going through the same uh, IPPC um, tier 2 method using an equation specifically for N2O, uh, 0.38 megatons per uh, CO2 equivalent per cow year. So basically the emissions associated with our boundaries in this case are those from the, again, from the, the electricity running the barns and milk harvesting and cooling the milk and those associated with the long-term storage. Uh, we're at uh, just under 5 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per cow year. Um, so next thing we do is we basically say we're going to take and insert a anaerobic digester, which is this uh, long, narrow um, 
uh, rectangle here between a long-term NOR storage and our cow barns. And so then we're going to basically look at that anaerobic digester very carefully. Um, there's a lot of factors there. There's a lot of judgment calls, uh, professional judgment calls that are needed to come up with some answers that could be defendable. And we've done our, our darndest to, uh, to do that as best as we can. Um, so we're not overrepresenting or, or underrepresenting or misrepresenting anything. We're trying to use a very balanced approach here. So um, if you were to think about it, uh, all the variables and then uh, different different ways you could look at them, is the conservative way. So the anaerobic digesters, normal management with no emphasis in greenhouse control. Those would be a lot of the digesters in New York State um, and the U.S. For, for that matter, because uh, to the recent past, and even in, in even locally here, there's been no significant value for greenhouse gas reduction. So farms are not incentivized to maximize uh, the uh, the greenhouse gas reduction. Achievable would be ones uh, that would be under excellent management with emphasis on greenhouse gas control. So we we tend to go with higher values there. And then typical may be ones that are that probably are ones that were more readily achieved if people put some really good effort into it. So. Um, those are the other numbers which um, I'll call out. Uh, we're still using a pretty, for those of you who know electrical generation, we're using a pretty aggressive capacity factor for even where we're talking about this typical line of 0.95. Um, so this is the uh, flow diagram. Um, so we have a, a dairy facility in the lower left-hand corner, our anaerobic digester inserted between the, that dairy facility and a long-term storage, and we've included a solid liquid separator as part of our anaerobic digester system in this analysis. Um, the reason we did that is most of the farms uh, that have digesters are also very interested in using um, reclaimed manure solids for bedding, or they already are. So in this case, we decided to include that in analysis. I will say that not all farms are um, interested in that because of uh, um, challenges that are associated with using organic bedding relative to other health and milk quality and in some cases. So uh, my goal is not to go through all these numbers here, but to show you that we have uh, looked at all the numbers for all the, uh, the factors um, using um, a conservative, achievable, and a typical approach. Um, so we went back and forth quite a bit on this. Um, at the end of the day, if we use the typical approach and we uh, basically add up um, what's and subtract um, off what uh, the the um, baseline, so I didn't say that very clearly. We basically had a baseline of 0.4496, if you recall, earlier. That's per cow per year. And if we look at our digester system, we're we're now just we're now not uh, purchasing uh, fossil fuel based electricity. We're generating ourselves. So that's a green number. But wait a minute, we still have uh, emiss emissions from the digester. They're not perfect. Um, as far as containing the gas, there's uh, there's some unburnt methane that would maybe go through the engine, very small, but it's, we accounted for it. Um, our flares aren't perfect. Um, system leaks. Uh, anytime you see a digester and see corrosion around it, that's a, that's a leak of biogas. So um, that's a little bit more hefty number. We do see system leaks, and so we accounted for those. Um, and then our long-term storage. Um, we're not we're not totally mitigating the uh, greenhouse gas emissions associated with long-term storage, but we are greatly reducing it, and we've used the IPPC uh, tier two equations and came up the 1.87 number using typical values. So again, if you basically uh, follow along, we basically are subtracting our um, reduction to the system from our baseline, and um, and uh, get a pretty nice uh, reduction there of. Um, um, of almost four metric tons per CO2 cow equivalent year. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, um, take that number uh, and apply the EPA cost of uh, carbon or the economic value of carbon, depending on how one would look at it. Right now, it's more thought of as a cost. So we have our 3.9 uh, megatons of CO2 per cow year, um, and we multiply it by uh, an average value of $47.82, which we basically calculated over the last three years. Actually, it's not the last three years. It's the three years starting with this year going forward, and that's relative to some specific work we did for the state government. And in this case, we have $186 per cow year. So um, that's some meaningful dollars. Um, that would definitely change the economic situation on a dairy farm relative to the inter digester business enterprise. Um, so um, if you are interested in, in reviewing the, uh, the uh, engineering and, and IPC equations and math and the stuff associated with calculating these numbers, 
um, we did present a paper this summer at a professional society meeting that we could make available in the near future. So again, the take home points are, there. I'm just gonna reiterate them that, um, that we need some help, uh, farms need some help making the digesters more uh, economically viable and stand alone, stand on their two, on two feet. Um, these numbers I have provided for you are not absolutes, so we need to be, keep that in mind and uh, certainly have some more work to do to confirm the numbers we have and then lobby for change. Um, even if our numbers are off by 30%, they're still pretty strong numbers that would mean uh, a change in the uh, overall business enterprise for a farm-based digester. So with that, I conclude. Thank you for your time and appreciate the opportunity.